last time. G'day guys, Dan here from Reptile Encounters. Thanks so much for joining us this morning for another Animal Spotlight. Now we'll wait for some of you guys to jump on and say g'day. Please say hi in the comments to let us know that you're there. And while we're waiting, make sure that you've got notifications turned on and that you've liked the Reptile Encounters page so you can keep up to date with all the goings on here as well as all the live streams and other content that we're going to be bringing you. Also, make sure you jump on our website so that you can see all of the wild live streams that we're offering for child cares and schools. The new, uh, what's the program called? The Animal Sponsorships. That's the one. Words just left my brain. The Animal Sponsorships, where you can get special packages for some of our animals and even get the chance to have an experience with them once the current health situation kind of goes away a little bit. Also, make sure you jump on our YouTube, subscribe to our channel, and ring that little bell so you get all those notifications as well. We've got people saying g'day. We do. We have Rosita and Elizabeth here. G'day again. Debbie's here. Hi, Debbie. <laughs> Tia and Michael are watching. Tia and Michael are watching. <laughs> Hi, Michael. <laughs> now... One of the things that I'm the most passionate about when it comes to Australian wildlife is endangered species. In, we have got a shocking track record when it comes to endangered animals in this country. In the last 400 years, we have won the race when it comes to the most mammalian extinctions. It's between 29 and 35, depend on what, depending on what book you're reading, but it's high. In fact, we've lost something like 18 species just from northern Victoria alone. Lots of our little species, like our potteroos and betongs and things like that, some of the other mammals that you've met on some of our other streams. Now, reptiles and amphibians, <laughs> we're not that far behind in that race either. We have a lot of very, very endangered species of cold-blooded creatures. And of course, reptile encounters, cold-blooded creatures are our specialty. And so today I want to introduce you, or reintroduce you, to one of my favourite little species of endangered turtle. We talked a bit about turtles last week and you guys would have met this species, but I will get her out again. She was full of energy last week, so we'll see how she goes today as well. Come here, you. This, this is Penny. And Penny is called a Mary River Turtle. Now, Penny's been with us for probably seven or eight years now. She's not very big, but they are a very slow-growing species. We're going to get to that in just a second. So... Oh, here's a pun for you, Thursday. Let's dive in. Now, she's not very big. They do get a lot bigger than this, but we didn't always know that. See, this species <clears throat> is still relatively new to science. What happened was, many, many years ago, in the 1960s and 70s, people liked keeping turtles as pets. We like keeping turtles as pets today, but now, for the most part, we know how to do it a lot better. Back then, people had very little idea of how to care for them properly. Pet stores were also allowed to take animals from the wild. Obviously this is very different now and our pet stores are a lot more responsible. Back then suppliers could collect animals from the wild, they could bring them to pet stores that could then be sold. They would sell baby turtles as penny turtles, which is where she got her name because they were the size of a little penny coin. And from the areas that they were collected from, some of them ended up being eastern longnecks, which have got a huge distribution and are quite common. Some of them were saw-shelled turtles, which are also relatively common across most of their range and found in a whole bunch of different places too. But most of them were this species that scientists had no idea what they were. Now, what pet stores would sell them, well, were the care sheets that they'd give would say, you know, Keep them in a little enclosure, keep the water nice and cold, feed them once a week and they stay nice and small and cute and they live for about six months. Now if you look after a turtle like that, it is only going to live for six months. This is an ectotherm. It's a warm-blooded creature and this species comes from the Mary River in southeastern Queensland where the water is a lot warmer than it is down here in Victoria. So they need a heater in the water so that they can regulate their body temperature. When they're babies, they've got to eat at least once a day. In fact, the recommended uh, feeding schedule for baby turtles is about the s food to the amount of the size, of, about the size of the head, once a day. We can split that in half and do it twice a day until they start getting older and then you can kind of feed them a little bit less. And they definitely need a big tank. There's this big myth that turtles only grow to the size of the tank that they're kept in. It's not true. And if you don't keep them in an appropriately sized tank, what you end up with is turtles getting horribly disfigured and stunted and twisting shells and really, really big health problems. But again, back then, we didn't know better and we didn't have Google. Funnily enough, kids, there was a time where Google didn't exist and we had to do things like read books. But back then, we didn't know. Now, 
In this period of time, we estimate that about 15,000 baby turtles were taken from the Mary River each year for about 10 years. So we're talking about 150,000 baby turtles from one river. Do you think there's many left? No, not many at all. And of course, because we didn't know how to look after them, most of them were dying. But because people thought, oh, they're only supposed to live for six months, people would just go buy another one. And the, the, the problem would keep cycling. Now, it became illegal <clears throat> for animals to be taken from the wild like this and sold. Now it's called poaching. You're not allowed to do that. So, everything kind of calmed down on that front. But we still had no idea what species this was. And for a long time, they were simply referred to as pet shop turtles. Now, a particular turtle lover, kind of a superhero in the Australian uh, herpetological circles, or the reptile scientist circles, John Cairn, made it his mission to figure out where these turtles came from. And he spent 20 years trying to find it. Until he suddenly one day got a report <clears throat> from someone up in South East Queensland saying, hey, we've sighted these turtles. And he went up to Maryborough on the Mary River. <laughs> Not very creative with all the names, are we? And they found this species. That was 1987. By the time they were studied and named as their own unique species, it was 1994. That's that not that long ago. 1994, I would have been three years old. When we realised they were their own species, when we realised they were only found in the Mary River, from the upper reaches near Kenilworth all the way down to where the water starts getting salty, that's where they stop. They don't like that. Very, very small range. Like a lot of our short, a lot of, especially our shortness, but a lot of our turtle species in Australia are only found in one river. So, they were in trouble. They were our second most endangered turtle species behind the Western Swamp Turtle from over in Western Australia that's very, very endangered. Now, the Australian Freshwater Turtle Conservancy was established. The first reptile-based conservation group in Australia designed to help threatened and endangered turtle species, especially the Mary River Turtle. They started breeding them in captivity. We discovered a few things about them. Number one, they are incredibly slow to mature. In fact, females can't start breeding until they're 25 years old. And males don't start breeding until they're about 30. It's a long time for them to get to full size. Also, they don't stay penny coin sized. They are huge. They're the second largest freshwater turtle in Australia, the largest of the short necks. Their shells have been recorded. The carapace, the top part of the shell here, oh, big splash, come in. This part here has been recorded at 50 centimeters. Half a meter. They get huge. We found out amazing things about this species. They're one of our famous bum breathers. They can suck water up their rear end, up their cloaca, and special organs, special sacs called the bursae, can take oxygen out of the water. They can stay underwater, we're estimating, for about 72 hours. Three days underwater, so they can stay nice and hidden. And so people, anyways, people started to breed them in captivity, and Babies started getting released into the wild. They're still being released to this day as well. But it's going to take a long time to re-establish this population. We basically took an entire generation out of the wild. Because it takes them so long, we're still looking at maybe another 10, 15 years before some of these baby turtles can really start breeding in, in the wild and start re-establishing this wild population. So it's going to take some time. Now, they've got other threats as well. Most of their range goes through agricultural land. There, they like fast moving sections of rivers where there's lots of oxygen in the water, as well as big, deep pools with logs and lots of vegetation for them to eat. They are an omnivore. They eat lots of meat when they're young, but lots and lots of plants when they're older. They can actually store plant matter in their guts, in their intestines, for up to three weeks, breaking down and getting all the good stuff out. So their habitat varies along the along the course of the river, but a lot of it's surrounded by farmland, surrounded by agricultural practices. And so we've got to make sure, number one, there's no chemicals running off from the farms that are going to get into the water and either harm the turtles or harm the fish and the yabbies and the plants that they need to survive. Also, they come out of the water to lay their eggs and they dig their burrow down into the soil. 
And we've got to make sure that sheep and cows and horses and other hooved animals aren't walking through that softer ground and squashing turtle nests. One hoof goes the wrong way and all of a sudden an entire breeding effort for a turtle is gone for the year, which is really sad. Introduced pests are a problem as well. Foxes are notorious for digging up turtle nests and in, you know, not necessarily down here towards Melbourne, but further north, feral pigs are also really bad for digging up turtle nests. Now there's lots of natural predators of turtle eggs, things like goannas really like to dig up and even things like ibis will eat turtle eggs and they're natural predators. But uh, let's use the Murray River for example here in Victoria. The Murray River currently has about 95% of turtle nests being broken into by predators. Of that 95%, 93% is foxes which means your lace monitors that are up there and sand goannas and heath monitors at certain points or your ibis, your water birds, anything else that's going along and digging up turtle nests is only 2% predation. The other 93% is foxes. So we have got to do something about the fox problem here in Australia. They really do affect so many of our animals. You're probably sick of hearing me say the word fox, but they are that big a problem. Now, hopefully, these practices being put into place can help these amazing turtles to come back from the brink of extinction. They really are incredibly unique animals. Mary River turtles, evolutionarily speaking, divert evolutionarily, I think I made up a word. Anyway, they diverged from all other groups of turtles about 40 million years ago. Now to put that into perspective, we humans, separated from chimps and bonobos about 10 million years ago. Which means these guys have been on their own path for 30 million years longer than we have. And they've evolved all the amazing features that they have. They've evolved those special little barbells on their chin, which are kind of wet at the moment, Penny. <laughs> that she uses to feel around in turbid waters. They've evolved, she hasn't got it yet, but they've evolved really big tails. On a male Mary River turtle at full size, their tail can be 70% the length of the carapace, nearly three quarters as long. Some people don't think turtles have got tails at all. That one's got a huge tail. They are an incredible species, really unique. The second most endangered turtle in Australia in the top 25 most endangered turtles on the planet and one of incredible ecological importance because of how unique their evolution is and how incredibly unique the species is. So, it can be a bit difficult for some of our more poorly known or our cold-blooded creatures to get the same attention as some of their cute and fluffy counterparts. We all know about the plights about things like the Eastern Barred Bandicoot or the um, the problems that koalas or northern hairy nosed wombats are facing. And you know what? They're all really, really important as well. Don't get me wrong, we want to save all of these species. But we've got to remember too that some of the animals that might be a little less cute and cuddly are in just as much danger. Some of our turtles, some of our skinks, some of our alpine species, even things like the broad toothed rat. We hear rat, we go, oh, but the broad toothed rat. He's a very, very placid, very happy little rodent scurrying around some of the more alpine parts of Australia that's in a lot of trouble too. We've got to remember all of our endangered species need help, not just the cute and fluffy ones. Now, we talked about the penny turtle problem and we've got one other thing I want to talk about today before I let you go and that's the fact that we're kind of looking at a similar problem now with a very, very different species. And we've met that one too. I'm going to get this one out. People like keeping turtles as pets now as well. There is nothing wrong with keeping turtles as pets. If you can set up their enclosure properly, you have got a pet for life. Some of these turtle species here in Australia, they're not just slow growing, they're long lived. Even your little eastern long neck turtles can survive for up to 100 years. But they don't start out at full size. When they hatch, they're very, very small. They're still coin size, sometimes you know, 50% coin when they hatch. And so pet stores will sell them as tiny little babies. But you've got to do your research. One of the number one species at the moment that's getting dumped by people that bit off more than they can chew are Murray short turtles. Now, if you go to a pet store, you will see 
baby Murray turtles. You know, only this long. This is how big they get. This is Franklin. <laughs> Here we go. And Franklin is a Murray River short-necked turtle. Imidurum aquarii. This is not a penny. <laughs> By any stretch of the imagination. If I put you in here, what are you going to... Let's find out. Bit of warm water. There we go. Now, not a lot of room to move, but this is... Obviously, this is not where Franklin lives. Franklin's got a huge pond that he takes up. Now, or she takes up. Now, this is how big Murray River Shortnecks can get. Their carapace can get to 35 centimetres, which actually means that Franklin is not as big as a Murray Shortneck could get. For a full-grown Murray River Shortneck turtle, it is recommended a tank between 6 and 8 foot by 2 foot by 2 foot. Now, when they're babies, if you get one little turtle and boom into a tank that big, you're never going to see it again. It's never going to see its food. Yes, we start them in smaller tanks, but they will keep growing even if the tank is a bit small. So you've got to upgrade their tank size as they grow. If you're going to take on a turtle, make sure you've done your research and you know what you're buying and what you're in for. We don't just buy them to look after them as cute little babies. We're going to be looking after them for their entire lives. And we've got to make sure we're prepared to look after them for their entire lives. Puppies are all small and cute and fluffy. But like I've said before, if you're going to live in a little one-room apartment in the city, you're not going to buy a St. Bernard or a German Shepherd. You're going to buy something smaller that suits the space that you've got. You've got to do the same thing with turtles. If you can set up that tank or an outdoor pond, if you live uh, in areas where the weather kind of suits and you're not going to freeze your poor turtles to death outside, by all means, go for it. They are fantastic pets. They're a really rewarding animal to keep. But know what you're biting off because lots of turtles around March and April each year get dumped at vets. Get, you know, people try and give them to the local animal shelves and stuff because they've bought little turtles for Christmas. And a few months later, the turtle's starting to grow. Murray Shortnecks are the opposite of Mary River Turtles. They're very fast growing. And they can get to full size inside of three or four years. So they grow quite quickly. And if you feed them properly when they're young, they will grow quite rapidly. So when it gets to March or April, similar to the puppies that we buy at Christmas, people start to go, oh, this isn't as little and cute as it used to be. I don't want this anymore. And that's not fair. They are still absolutely beautiful creatures. And we've got to be looking after them. So if we're looking to buy them for Christmas, just like puppies, it's not just a present for Christmas, it's a present for life. Although, in this case, it actually is a present for your entire life. So make sure that we look after all our animals and we purchase any pets responsibly and with the future in mind. Now, thanks so much for tuning into our live stream this morning. I hope you've learned something about an absolutely amazing endangered species as well as one of our local favourites. Make sure that you've got notifications turned on for Reptile Encounter so you don't miss any of our live streams. Make sure that you've got our page liked as well if you haven't done that already. Make sure you've got notifications on. Ring that little bell and subscribe to our YouTube channel for all the content that we're going to be uploading there. And visit our website to check out our animal sponsorships and all of our live streams for schools and kinders as well. And make sure you share this video. We want to spread our love for our amazing Australian wildlife as far as possible. Make sure you get sharing. Let us know what you think. If there's any animals or any topics you want us to cover, let us know. Have we got any questions at all? Did you mention how old these guys get? These guys? We are the, as in the Murrays, mm. they can get, on average, you'd be looking at 60 to 80 years for an adult, but they can get, you, you have to be prepared for them to get up towards 100. The long neck species can definitely get there. Things like the broad shell turtle rex that we've met a couple of times, they are renowned for being very, very long lived. That all? Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us, guys. Dan, Senior Executive Wildlife Ambassador for Reptile Encounters. I'll see you next time.